There's a famous quote from the author Sun Tzu in his book, The Art of War. And the quote is, Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles, a thousand victories. What is the implication here? The idea is as long as you know yourself well, and as long as you know your enemy well, in terms of your strengths and weaknesses on your side and on their side, then you will know when to engage and how to engage the enemy. And no matter how many times you confront the enemy, you will always win. So the question is, who is our enemy? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this abundantly clear throughout the Qur'an who our enemy is. And now that Ramadan is over, we know that this enemy is back with us. Of course, I'm referring to shaitan. As Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ كَانَ, لا كان إن الشيطان لَكُمْ عَدُوًا فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًا Allah Ta'ala says what? Indeed, shaitan is an enemy to you, so take him as an enemy. In other words, he is your enemy. This is somebody that you may try to ignore. This may be somebody that you try to leave on the back burner. But at the end of the day, you have to realize that shaitan is indeed real. He exists, and he is out to get you. And so you need to take him as an enemy. What does that mean, take him as an enemy? Can I go up to him and fight him physically? No. Take him as an enemy means understand what the plot is. Because the moment you understand how he's going to get at you, the moment you understand in what ways he's trying to attack you, this weakens his abilities against you because you can predict what's happening. So what does shaitan want from us? I want to analyze this from a few perspectives. From the internal, personal perspective, and then from the public perspective. The personal perspective, the internal perspective, shaitan wants you, number one, to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, إِسْتَحْوَذَ عَلَيْهِمُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ ذِكْرَ اللَّهِ That shaitan overcame them and made them forget the remembrance of Allah. The moment shaitan has any control or any ability, he wants you to become distracted. Pick up your phone, go on your laptop, I don't know, talk to your friends, whatever it may be. Go out, do, go here, go there, go wherever you have to go. But what do you do? Don't remember who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Don't remember your Lord. Forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the saying goes, when you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. The idea is what? That when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is removed from the equation, then He can fill your head with whatever He wants. Without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your guide, what's left as a guide other than your base whims and desires? So step one, distract you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forget about your prayers. Forget about dhikrullah, forget about dua. Just think about anything and everything else. That's shaitan's number one move. Number two is what? Now that you are not being guided by the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala, now shaitan comes in with what? Impulses. He wants to make you an impulsive person. يَعِدُهُمْ يَعِدُهُمْ وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ Shaitan promises them and arouses their base desires. He wants to entice you to always follow your appetites. He wants to bring out these base instincts within you to make sure that they are your guiding principles. In fact, he promises, that indeed I will misguide them and indeed I will arouse their base desires. Subhanallah. And then also, and I'm going to command them to change the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always change. You're not good enough the way you are. You being created as an Abdullah, this gives you honor, this gives you respect, this makes you proud of yourself, no matter where you are, no matter what you, what's happening. It doesn't matter how much money I have, it doesn't matter where I am in the world, as long as I'm an Abd of Allah Ta'ala, this gives me honor. Shaitan wants to take this self-confidence away from you. And always tell you you're not good enough. More tattoos, you need more piercings, you, know, you need more implants, you need more makeup, more filters every time you take pictures of yourself. You need to, in fact, have more fake hair or change your gender, uh, sexual reassignment surgery. You're never good enough. He always wants to change something. There's always an objective to change the way your creation is. Keep you busy jumping from one foot to the next and never remember what is my purpose, what are my goals, who is my creator, what am I here for. SubhanAllah, test this out yourself. You can, at any day of the week, when you're either in school or at work or talking to your neighbors, ask them, what do you think life is all about? You will be shocked at how many people have never even thought about this question. Why they exist, where they came from, what is their purpose, who is their Lord. They don't think about these things. In fact, unfortunately, Muslims become very awkward in these conversations and avoid these conversations because they don't want to embarrass the other person. But that's your job. You have to. You have to suck it up and say, you know what, even if it's going to be an awkward conversation, I need to put this question to them so 
I challenge them and make them think about these things. Allah Ta'ala gives the example, كَالَّذِي كَالَّذِي اسْتَهْوَتْهُ الشَّيَاطِينَ فِي الْأَرْضِ حَيْرَانِ Allah Ta'ala says, it's like certain people, certain people, the disbelievers, they're like the ones who the devils have enticed, have enticed and they wander upon the earth completely confused. Hayran, in complete confusion. They have no idea what their purpose is. They don't know whether they're coming or going. In fact, Allah Ta'ala says what? وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَن يُضِلَّهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Shaytan wants what? To misguide them a, and sending them very far astray. That's the objective. Give, get them so busy with running after desires. Get them so busy running after one trend to the next. One newest fashion to the next. Always, what's the next thing I have to buy? What's the latest I need to keep up with? Keeping up with appearances. When you're always jumping from one foot to the other, you never have time to sit and think to yourself, why am I alive? Who is my Lord? What is my purpose? And so he's trying to send them as far astray as possible. This is number one. Forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get busy with everything that distracts. Then what's the next step? Somebody might say, well, when I'm so astray, when I'm twisting in circles and I don't even know what my purpose is, I'm going to realize that a change is necessary. I'm going to realize I'm lost. So isn't that going to make shaitan lose his, his plot? Isn't it going to fall apart the moment people realize, man, my life is just going up and down, going in circles, and it's not going anywhere? No, actually, he has a follow-up plan. Wishful thinking. Allah says, what? A shaitan lahum wa amla lahum. Shaitan... He entices them and he also prolongs their hope. Amla lahum means give them long hope. In other words, even if things are going horribly, don't worry, it'll all work itself out. Even if all of your relationships are falling apart, don't worry, you'll figure it out. Don't worry, things are going to get better. How many times do you see people, no, I don't know what my purpose is and I don't know why I, I, I'm living and I don't even know why I'm going to school. I don't even know what my purpose of my degree is and what I'm going to be in my life. But you know what? I think it's all going to figure itself out. Amla lahum. He's giving them long, don't worry, it'll all, it'll all work out. You don't need to think about it. Just patting them on the back, telling, don't worry, just keep on waiting until death comes. And then when it gets snatched away, you say, send me back. I'm going to get serious now. Now it's too late. Subhanallah, over five times in the Quran, you find that Allah Ta'ala mentions what? That shaitan beautifies their deeds for them. Always, it doesn't matter what they're engaged in, no matter how horrible it is. Change the language. No, it's not shameless behavior. This is confidence, right? Right? This is, this is me. This is who I am. I'm being true to myself. This is my truth. There's so many different ways that people try to use language, manipulate language, to justify their own bad behavior, right? People are acting very rude. Oh, well, you know, if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best, or sayings like this, right? These type of ideas of, oh, it's justified to, be, to have bad behavior, or to be rude. And subhanAllah, the objective is what? To always beautify these evil deeds, as Allah says, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ That shaitan made their deeds attractive, tazeen. Zayyina, to adorn it, make it look beautiful, even though it's horrible. This can come in the form of rationalization, justifications, legitimization, whatever term you want to use, it's always the same. But you might say, hey, that can only work for so long until a person realizes, my life is not going anywhere, I need to fix myself up. Shaitan has a backup plan. The moment you get serious about your life, he says, good, you want to get serious? Let's get serious about money. Just get serious about money. That's the only thing you get serious about. The moment you realize you're running based off your desires and you're not focused about your life, he says, okay, time to get focused about dunya and dunya only. Why? Because you might go broke one day. Don't you know? Well, I have a million dollars saved up. You need two million. You have two million, you need, five, you need five million. You need 10 million. What about if a rainy day comes? What if it's a really rainy day? Come on, work harder. If you want to get serious, get serious about dunya and dunya alone. Shaitan continuously promises you poverty. This is his goal. The moment you get serious, he's going to keep telling you, no, you're going to go broke. It's all going to fall apart. Things are going to get bad. Rainy day. Focus on dunya, 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 until finally dunya gets taken away from you. We know. We know that the akhirah is forever, and we know this dunya is finite. But he's going to keep on making you focus on this finite dunya, so you can ignore the akhirah. So after a person has forgotten about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has been driven by their impulses, and they're completely confused and lost, they have no answers, they don't know why they exist or where they come from. And I'm telling you, you think I'm exaggerating. Try it out. Talk to people and ask them, why do you exist? You will find the vast majority, I've done this countless times, the vast majority of time, people look at you like, well, what do most people say? Well, what do you mean? Well, I don't know, there's lots of different answers for lots of different people. And they try to say all these different things that basically amount to what? I want to get away from the question. Because they don't have an answer. So you, when you hear this and when you see this for yourself firsthand, I don't want you to hear it from me. I want you to try it yourself. So you can be blown away and say, wow, shaitan has really gotten them so busy in sports, in, I don't know, entertainment, in this, that, and the other. They haven't asked the basic question, like, why am I even here? 
Why do I exist? It's amazing. So after he has made them forget about Allah, driven them by their impulses, made them confused and lost and reassured them with, with wishful thinking and rationalized their behavior and then ultimately made them only materialistic, after all of these steps, what is the big objective? To make sure that they disbelieve. كَمَثَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِذْ قَالَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِكْفُرْ فَلَمَّا كَفَرَ قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِئُ مِنْكِ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهُ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ That Allah Ta'ala gives the example and says that the shaytan, what does he do? He says to a man, disbelieve. In the moment that this, this man disbelieves, he says what? قَالَ إِنِّي بَرِئُ مِنْكِ I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> You're on your own. The moment you actually cross over into kufr and shaytan is confident that there's no coming back, he's like, yep, and I'm done. I have nothing to do with this. I fear Allah, the Lord of the worlds. You, you go ahead. You go ahead into kufr. This is his objective, to destroy you. So this is his objective on the personal scale. Let's take a look in the second khutbah about how he wants to deal with us on the social scale. Now on the public scale, on the social scale, what is shaitan's plot for us? First and foremost, he wants to make you naked. That's the goal. This, is, this was the goal since the time of Adam and Hawa, as we know. That shaitan whispered to them to make apparent to them that which was concealed from them of their private parts. His objective then was to make them naked, to make them see their nakedness. And honestly, he doesn't have to be creative. This is the same objective that he's constantly doing. And we see in society that whether it be through social media, whether, way, whether it be the way people dress, especially during the summertime, people are showing as much skin as possible. What's the objective? What's the objective of getting us naked? It's to bring out our animal instincts. Think about a dog. A dog wants to do what? Fight every male dog and have intercourse with every female dog. Isn't that the case? You, when you see the male dog, you're sizing him up. Right? This is the, this is the male nature, right? When men just look at each other as bodies and you can see the guy's size and muscle and so forth, you size him up. No concept of conversation, discussion, understanding one another, civilized discourse, forget about all that. Just barking at each other, yelling at each other, you know, squaring up on each other. SubhanAllah, unfortunately, we see a lot of that when we play sports with one another. No, no room for discussion. Just square up on each other and treat each other like animals. And then with the female, I, don't, I think it's self-explanatory. If anybody doesn't know, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. They take off their clothes and you know what you want to do. No concept of responsibility, no concept of marriage, no con concept of, uh, you know, uh, emotions and breaking one's heart and so on. No, no, no. Enjoy yourself and then walk away and get away with no concept of responsibility. This is what shaitan wants to do. Bring out the animal within us. So you see every male as a competition and every female as just an object of sexuality. That is the goal. And then what's next? Shaitan wants you to call you towards fahsha and munkar. Fahsha is open shamelessness. Munkar is the things that are private and embarrassing. Now the interesting thing is, think of it like a production line. The more you engage in that private evil that you're embarrassed about, but you do it over and over and over again, eventually you become desensitized. And then you don't mind doing it in public. Right? And then, because now you're doing that in public, in order to feel that same sort of excitement, what you do in public, what you do in private gets even worse. But then you do it over and over and over again, and then it gets shifted to the public sphere. And that's the objective. To keep on taking whatever is munkar, whatever is disgusting and horrible and is in private, bring it to the public. And then once that becomes publicized, whatever was in private becomes even worse. And then make it normal and then push it over to the public scale. As Allah Ta'ala mentions what? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ وَمَنْ يَتَّبِعْ خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَإِنَّهُ يَأْمُرْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That, O oh, you who have believed, do not follow the footsteps of shaitan, and whoever follows these footsteps of shaitan, indeed, he enjoins in immorality and wrongdoing. Fahsha can be translated as open shamelessness. Munkar is private and embarrassing evils. And these are the footsteps to keep on moving from the private to the public and keep on making the private worse and worse and worse. When you do this, when you remove the clothing, and when you keep on engaging in private ugly behavior and then slowly making these things, these ugly things more and more and more public, what happens? You lose respect for each other. You, res you, you lose respect for humanity. And when you have no respect for humanity, now's the time to start putting those sparks to set the whole thing aflame. Why? Because it's all now gasoline and it's just waiting for those sparks. What does Allah say? In the shaitan yanzahu baynahum. Indeed, shaitan is always trying to induce dissension amongst them. Allah says, wa inna shayateen la yuhuna ila awliyaihim li yujadilukum. That indeed, the shayateen, the devils, they inspire their allies to dispute with you. I want to get you guys arguing. I want to get you guys fighting. And ultimately, why? As Allah says, to make 
that shaitan wants you to hate one another, takes down the respect from one another, and now makes you hate each other. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانَ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمْ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ That indeed, shaitan, he only wants to cause between you animosity and hatred. This is his objective. What are the tools that shaitan uses? Gambling, drinking, shirki offerings, superstitious behavior, all of these things, as Allah says, يَا أَيُّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسَرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَلْزَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ That these things are what? From amongst the defilement, the filth of the work of shaitan. These are his tools that he's going to be using. He's going to be using what? Conspiracy, or you could say gossiping, backbiting, division, making sure some groups are talking to others. Why? To isolate one another. So you're always suspicious of one another. Why? So that the depression can set in and you feel completely dissociated and isolated from one another because of backbiting and reputation destruction. As Allah says, إِنَّمَا النَّجْوَ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ لِيَحْزُنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا That in private conversations, this type of, you know, backbiting and so forth, is only from shaitan that he may لِيَحْزُن To make people grieve, to make you feel depressed. Who? The believers. To make the believers feel depressed. SubhanAllah. What are the tools that he uses? He uses a certain kind of offense and a certain kind of defense. What is the offense of shaitan versus the defense of shaitan? Allah Ta'ala tells us when He tells us, gives Him two names, Al-Waswas, Al-Khannas. Allah could have called Him Al-Muwaswas, the whisperer, but Allah said Al-Waswas. This is Ismu Balagha. This is exaggerated. He's constantly whispering. But when does He stop? When does He have to stop whispering? When He has to retreat. Khannas, not Khanis, Khannas, Ismu Balagha. Emphasize that He's doing this constantly. Always going with whispers, always retreating. Constantly, never stops. Why? The moment you remember Allah, the moment He has to stop. The moment you remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Saying, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, he has to back off. The moment you say what? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim, he has to back off. Wa imma yanzaghannaka minash shaytan nazwun, fasta'idh billah. That, and if ever an evil suggestion comes to you from, uh, from shaytan, then seek refuge with Allah. This is what Allah Ta'ala is commanding us to do. That ultimately, when you look at that offense and defense, whispering and retreating, you think, this isn't such a tough enemy. Why should I be afraid of this person? How can I obey such a weak enemy? I should not be afraid at all. I should simply take refuge in Allah and have him run away from me. I should stay close to the remembrance of Allah and not let him give me all sorts of distractions. As Allah commands us, And shaitan, and never let shaitan avert you. Never let him block you from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, he is a clear enemy to you. So yes, we have to ask ourselves, am I actively, am I actively fighting against the evil plots of shaitan, or am I intimidated by a weak enemy? This is a very important question that each and every single one of us have to ask ourselves. As Allah Ta'ala says, as Allah Ta'ala commands us, وَقَاتِلُوا أَوْلِيَاءَ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Alhamdulillah, this should give reassurance to the believers. You should always feel good when you hear this ayah. Allah Ta'ala tells you what? So fight against the allies of shaitan. In this part of the world, we need to get more active in what? our intellectual discourse. We need to be spreading the message of Islam and clarifying the doubts that people have. This should be our goal. This should be our full-time objective, inshallah ta'ala, to fight against the allies of shaitan with the lies that are being spread about our deen and about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to clarify. And you have to ask yourself, is this something I'm engaged in or am I intimidated? And if I am intimidated, why am I intimidated? Because what? I'm, a, I'm afraid of a weak plot? and a weak enemy. Allah says, إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضعيفة, That indeed the plot of shaitan is always, always has been, always will be weak. He all he has is whispering. You have to remember Allah and he goes away. And if you still have fear of speaking for the truth and opposing shaitan, then never forget this ayah in which Allah Ta'ala tells us what? إِنَّ مَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَاءَهُ فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِي إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ that, that, that this is shaitan who frightens you with his supporters. Oh, what are they going to think? What are these people going to think if I be, become a practicing Muslim? What if I stand up for the truth? What are they going to say about me? Oh my goodness, I have to be afraid of them. Allah says, don't fear them, fear me. Don't forget who's in charge. He's weak. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Qawi, Al-Jabbar, Al-Aziz. Allah Ta'ala is Al-Qadir. Allah has all power, is all able, has all strength. Allah Ta'ala is in full control. How can we be afraid of shaitan and not have fear of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? So I ask Allah to make us of those who always, whenever we get these whispers from shaitan, 
We take refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who constantly have the dhikr Allah on our tongues to protect ourselves. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who keep ourselves, especially in the masjid, well clothed, well behaved, so we can treat each other as dignified human beings and not like animals. I ask, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who combat falsehood with truth and never get intimidated by the intimidation of shaitan. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Allahumma hadina fi man hadayt, wa aafina fi man aafayt, wa tawallana fi man tawallayt, wa barak lana fi ma aatayt, wa qina sharra ma qadayt, fa inna ka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk, innahu la yadillu man walayt, wa la ya'izzu man aadayt, tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt, rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil aakhirati hasana, wa qina athab al-nar, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad, wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasimim kithira wa aqimis salam.